Now this illustration deals with vertical clearance for overhead service drops in accordance with NEC 230.24b as in boy. Now notice the uh, information that's in the boxed in uh, area and notice you have a column for nominal voltage. You have a column that deals with strictly service entrance clearances. You have a column for residential property, and then you have a column, a column there addressing public streets. Now, notice the voltage is divided into three levels. You have zero to 150 volts, then the minimum point attachment for the service entrance is 10 feet. But in most all cases, you're gonna start where the people only uh, uh, areas for the 10 foot and start walking out toward the residential driveway. And when you have walked out 15 foot, as previously mentioned, your drop should be 12 foot. And a lot of times uh, that's permissible. But due to grade levels changing during construction, a lot of utilities just want the service drop attachment not being a minimum of 10 foot, but 12 foot. So keep that in mind. Now say your voltage is not 120, 122.40, or 122.08, but your voltage is 277.480. Now you're in the second level of 151 to 300 volt. Now notice then it's 12 foot for service entrance attachment. 12 foot for the residential property, and 18 foot across the street. Now just for Texas viewers, you know, we're 22 foot across the street. But uh, in some cities require a greater height, some maybe even 24 foot. You have to check that out if you're crossing that street and get permission to do so. But now the residential driveway, it's a possibility that you're crossing that residential driveway, which you can do by 230.24b. But notice for zero to 150 volts, 10 foot, 12 foot, 18 foot. Now a lot of uh, uh, utilities say, no, the 10 foot is for uh, pedestrian people travel underneath it. You gotta get up 12 foot. So this is a manner of interpretation. Now uh, over uh, 51 through 300, which is mainly we're talking about 277, 480, Notice it's 12 foot attachment. So if we, uh, the utility said, let's just make it 12 foot attachment. We cover uh, all the voltages uh, of 120, 122, 40, 122, 8, 277, 480. Uh, we would uh, cover those because uh, it's the same height then. But now once we're over 301 to 600, and a lot of times this uh, includes a 480 volt corner grounded system in some cases where you take a, uh, a actually hot uh, ungrounded leg and connect it to ground uh, and create a corner ground and notice then it jumps up to 15 foot you have to attach. You gotta watch this if you're an electrician. You, you got to know uh, these clearance rules of services if you're making these attachments based upon voltage. And then notice residential property increases to 15 foot, but the street is still 18 foot if the state that you're designing in doesn't require it to be greater than 18 foot. Uh, like in the state of Texas, you're 30 foot from the rail. In the NEC, I think you're 24 and a half foot from the rail. So you have to make sure if you're crossing a railroad track, you get permission to do that from the railroad. You just can't automatically cross streets, railroads underneath or overhead without getting uh, approval to do so. So our figure 6-14 deals with vertical clearance for overhead service conductors in conjunction with 230.24b. If they're feeders that are crossing then you and attaching, then you would need to look at 225.18 uh, for these rules. Uh, in the National Electrical Safety Code, you would need to review 
your table 232-1 with the notes below that table, and then you'll find that uh, uh, what is exactly required to satisfy NEC as well as the NEC. And if you cross streets or railroads, then you're going to have to get with uh, commissions that deal with streets and then get with the railroad commission that deals with anything crossed in their railroad.